then do these inseparable components talk to one another? What language do they speak? Candace Perk, a neuroscientist formerly with the National Institute of Mental Health, has mapped the chemicals which she believes may carry the messages, the neuropeptides. When I arrived, I kind of looked like Courtney Love having a bad hair day. Candace influenced my work and then I felt really validated. I think we both thought out of the box, always. I always understood that the mind and the body and the energy field were all connected. And she put the science to it. Is Prozac in the water supply in New York yet? <laughs> Not yet. Research led her to believe that the emotions were the link between the mind and the body. Scientists would really rather use each other's toothbrushes than each other's terminology. Dr. Candace Pert is interesting to me as a woman in science. Um, the scientific community is still dismissive towards women today, so her level of productivity during her time is nothing less than astounding. This is a woman who lived her spirituality as a scientist. Candace Pert brought together 1960s and 70s counterculture with modern American science and medicine. She disobeyed that instruction as she disobeyed nearly all instructions in her life. She brought two worlds together, actually, mind and body, east and west. Now, what is a neuropeptide? Peptides are strings of amino acids uh, strung together very much like pearls uh, strung along in, in a necklace. And a neuropeptide is a peptide that was first found in the brain, but then later on, we found that they were everywhere, and that's what really shook everybody up. AIDS became a big problem in the U.S. This was like 1984, 85, this serious problem. People were dying. There weren't any drugs. There weren't any treatments. Candace actually had a huge degree of compassion, and she said, look, I know receptors, and I believe this virus probably attaches to a receptor. Later, those receptors would be discovered. Uh, at the time, they were not, but she proposed that there would be receptors, the viruses would bind to the receptors, and she could find a drug uh, that would block the virus from binding the receptor. If you ever saw the movie Dallas Buyers Club, the drug that the main character, that Matthew McConaughey, who played an AIDS patient, the drug he was trying to get and that he kept importing from Mexico for, for himself and other AIDS patients was in fact peptide T. It has tremendous anti-inflammatory properties and since almost all chronic diseases share the final common pathway and that's inflammation, peptide T is a very important drug. So Candace was an amazing woman. My job as a graduate student was to find the opiate receptor. Ba -bum. Why do smart people do dumb things? Why do smart people do That's dumb things? That's the brain, isn't it? Because no, it's the, maybe the spinal cord. You know, the endocrinologists like to be over in their department, and the immunologists over there, and the neuroscientists over there. Does a disease belong in immunology so we can get the money? Or does it, in, does it belong over here in neurology so we can get the money? You know, there's a lot of turf fights uh, over diseases. How many of you heard this, the word psychoneuroimmunology? I mean, I was taught that the mind is somehow distinct from the body. It's something in here, in the, in the brain. Well, that just all goes back to a, a turf deal that, got, that Descartes made with the Roman Catholic Church. Dr. Candace Pert put in place the science for the mind-body movement. At Georgetown, one of the things that's going on is the creation of an institute for new medicine. She had a lab bench, and I was assigned by Saul to the other side of the lab bench. She was already married and had a little boy, and she would bring him in to the laboratory to cap all the simulation vials. Um, in the laboratory, and I'd be a little horrified because they were full of radioactivity, but back in those days, we didn't really care. A lot of mainstream science is a little bit stodgy, but then 
you know, you really start getting out there into that Deepak Chopra woo-woo stuff, you know. <laughs> Deepak is not so woo-woo. Our bodies are, can be fields of information and energy, and what that means is that, you know, it does have a molecular feeling, but it also has a, a vibrating field concept. It was wonderful being around someone so brilliant, especially a scientist, uh, who even believed in God. In her second book, Feeling Good, Feeling God, she talks about that. Remember, I'm a scientist in the Western tradition, and I don't use the word spirit. I'm not allowed, you know, soul is a four-letter word in our tradition. If you come away with one thing from this talk, your body is your subconscious mind. The human mind can tell the human body, get well and stay well. Like Candace pointed out, that we're wired for bliss. You know, the neurophysiology exists that we can exist in states of bliss. We're meant to exist in states of bliss. And what does it take to get to states of bliss? It's all in the breathing. And it's interesting that the part of the brain that regulates breathing makes every neuropeptide that anybody's ever looked for. The message that I think is most often heard from women leaders in science is that they are able to succeed despite being women, despite being mothers, etc. Dr. Pert, on the other hand, seems to say, I am a great scientist, capable of producing great work in part because of my womanhood. She was one of the kind of pioneers of the mind-body movement and the, the idea that, um, as Deepak Chopra or quoted from her, that. Um, the body is the unconscious mind, I think, is, is what he said at her funeral service. That that phrase that she had coined was the reason that he really got interested in, in neuroscience. Candace Pert was an activist and a feminist. She marched against the Vietnam War. I don't know if there's that many activists left at this point. Maybe we all need to be activists. And later, she became a celebrity in the new body, mind, and wellness movements which continue to attract baby boomers and Gen Xers. The emotions are so basic to our survival. Gee, I really want to be funny here. It's such a big stage and everything. <laughs> New York City. <laughs> I always wanted to be a rockette. Ooh.